What's that animal? Puma. Yeah, let's start at the beginning. I was born in Calgary, Alberta, Canada to Jason and Tara, my, my parents. Uh, they both are Canadians. They both grew up in Calgary. My mom was born in Toronto. My dad born in Calgary. I spent the first five years of my life there before my mom and dad separated and then my mom remarried to someone in Salt Lake City, Utah. So that's where I moved to from there. The story gets a little complicated because obviously you know me as a Canadian marathoner, but I've spent a good chunk of my life in, in Utah. And so I kind of consider both those places home, Calgary, Alberta, and Salt Lake City. Utah. Just got to Calgary this afternoon. I uh, just went for my first run back home. Um, beautiful, beautiful day out here. Kind of feels like spring. You can see out there, got some snow melt. Just absolutely gorgeous. This, where I'm at right now, is my Uncle Doug's house. This is kind of the place where most of my core memories in Calgary growing up were spent. Christmases. What's up? Jace. My dad stayed in Canada and my mom living in the, in the States created a dynamic where I spent a lot of my time back and forth, you know, Christmases in Calgary, summer vacations, all that stuff, just, you know, staying close to my dad as much as I could, uh, given the circumstances. Blow off some steam, little man. Yep. Ah! Faster than, oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> With my father passing in 2021, and with the background of you know him being from Calgary, that's where all my extended family is, all of his family. Uh, one of the promises I made to myself and to him in his in his last few months here was that I was going to make sure that even though my son couldn't couldn't know my father, that he would still know his family and they would know where I'm from, where he's from, where his roots are. And so I try to make it a point to go back home as much as I can, home being Calgary that is, uh, with my kids. And this was our first time taking McLean, uh, my daughter, and the second time we've taken Jace up there. And we've had family come visit and all that, but it was just really, really important to me to fulfill that promise and continue to find time to visit that family and keep them connected to Jace specifically and McLean. And it just means the world to me to be able to be in a position, you know, after, you know, nailing my uh, Paris qualifier. Now I kind of had this downtime. I was like, I got to go. I booked, booked flights right after I got back from Seville. And it was, it was a beautiful visit. I was so happy to be able to share with them this piece of me and you know i went there uh today is actually march 17th st patrick's day which is my dad's birthday so it's kind of a cool little timing of everything i just qualified for the the olympics with my time and uh it's my dad's birthday i'm taking my family up to see his his family and my family obviously and yeah that it, it's just you know it's just really special. Like many people, running wasn't my first sport. Uh, I, don't, I don't know too many people that like, as a five-year-old, dreamed of themselves being in athletics, but I was a stickball sport kid growing up, a uh, big fan of hockey was my first love, then basketball, baseball, football, everything really. And when I got to high school, I was a little too small to play those contact sports. I was a late bloomer of sorts, so I ended up signing up for cross country with a high school friend of mine and kind of the rest is history chose this sport because it was the only thing that I knew I could do at the high school and then you know what uh, it kind of caught on slowly and was a slow burn and I fell in love with it after uh, a couple years of just you know falling in love with the process with that bit of a crap show this morning I was supposed to do a track workout but went to the track 
and there's still ice on it even though it's been pretty warm here for about a week so no track workout for me this morning gonna do a tempo run just had to swap some days not a huge deal but yeah so now today i'll do a six mile tempo hopefully saturday after a few more warm days we'll have clear enough track surface to hit some speed yep there's daddy So obviously I started running, got good enough where running in college became an option. And I had this big dream of going to a big school and going, you know, going big, going out of state, you know, Oregon, Colorado. If you know anything about the college recruiting scene, you have to be special to get a scholarship to a school like that. So I kind of was in a position where I had to balance uh, my dream of going to that big program that I sought after and going to a school I could afford. And BYU is a pretty affordable institution. They had a great program and I was familiar with a lot of what they did being growing up in, in Utah and then being located in Utah. So I took a visit and got a walk-on spot on the the BYU cross country team and the rest is kind of history in the sense of I got to on campus worked my butt off like everybody does trying to make it and just trying to survive uh, adjusting to a new situation and after a couple years of, of seeing steady improvement I kind of burst onto the scene with a NCAA runner-up finish my sophomore year of eligibility in the 10,000 meters it's surreal. I mean, I had goals to be at least first team All-American coming off of regionals. I was in ninth with about 500 to go, but there was just this glob of single file guys right in front of me. Kind of just went for it, and I had it, and so it was good. I mean, dream come true. The Hayward Field, everything, it's just magical. And that was probably the moment where I went from the kid that just wanted to make it at a big school and be uh, a part of a college team to saying, you know what, maybe I could do this at the next level and be a professional athlete because, you know, if you can make it in the NCAA, you can make it anywhere. I just did a six mile alternating pace tempo. I'm supposed to do a track session this morning, like I said, but we thought the track would be clear because it's been pretty warm. There's still a sheet of ice over every lane. So I had a, another workout this week. I just flipped the days. So I did six mile tempo, alternating pace between about 450 per mile and about 510, I think. Working out in a different place, always you don't know what pace you can actually run it, run at certain places. So those paces were loose, but I ended up running 450, Three, five oh seven, four fifty one, five oh eight, four fifty two, five oh seven. So pretty much the right spirit of the workout kind of thing. Felt pretty good actually. So now it's a lovely day out here. I'm gonna cool down back to my Uncle Doug's house and just yeah. Cheers. When you're going pro and running, it's not like the NBA or the NFL. You don't get drafted. You have to kind of go through the who wants me process and look at what your options may or may not be. And I knew at the time I was leaving BYU that I wanted to be a marathoner. And there was really only one group that stuck out to me as the marathon group. And it was based here in Flagstaff and that was Hoka Northern Arizona Elite. Years of my professional career. And I was really grateful for my time at NAZ Elite because they were kind of the premier marathon group at the time. And I got to ingratiate myself with a couple really, really amazing athletes and coaches that had been around and had helped people achieve what I was trying to achieve in the marathon. And although I didn't have like a seamless transition to the marathon or to uh, professional running in general, I felt like the, the lessons I learned on that team were a big, big piece of how I became the marathoner I am today. Down there, that's where I worked out. Cooling down up here.
What's that animal? I'm just getting some lemon, lemon meringue pie shot with Jill. You must have those in the States so don't you? So I joined NAZ Elite in 2019, and after a couple years on the team, 2021 was the post-pandemic delayed Olympic year, and obviously a lot of things were going on at that time as in the professional running world. I was trying to make an Olympic team. My first Olympic team, was my, that was my goal. But I wasn't running well. On the outside, that could have been seen as maybe a coaching thing or a fit thing, or maybe just I was struggling. Maybe I wasn't cut out for this. But behind the scenes, a lot was going on in my life. I found out I was gonna be a dad kind of by surprise in the end of 2020, beginning of 2021. So that's a big life change right there. And at the same time, in January of 2021, I found out my, my father, was diagnosed with uh, colon cancer and he he lost a battle with cancer actually in march of 2021 so pretty quickly after his diagnosis and uh you know weighing this i'm about to become a dad i just lost my father and i'm trying to make an olympic team i'm i'm trying to adjust to my dr goals and dreams of being a professional runner there was just a lot happening in my life at that time and basically, long story short, I needed a change. It was such a big year in so many different ways that I felt pushed, pulled. I just felt so like I was in a, in a rut and I just needed to change everything. So I, I ended up deciding to leave NAZ Elite at the end of that year after you know, a disappointing year, probably not because of NAZ Elite or anything, but just because of life. Life gets in the way of our goals and our dreams sometimes, and that was the right thing for me. I just had it in my gut that I needed to do that, and that's when I found Ryan, and that's how I got where I am now. So I'm obviously very grateful I did that, um, and it was a, a turning point and a, a a growing point for me in my life just having that big change and that heartbreak and also that you know amazing moment of becoming a father and transitioning that into you know a big decision and changing my career and taking a leap of faith all right so couldn't do my speed workout on thursday it's now saturday Still probably too icy for a track workout, so talk to Ryan, switching some things up. So instead of doing what was intended to be 1500 meter pace work on a track, we're gonna do some 5K pace work on the road. We have six miles of 400 meters at 5K pace, 400 meters recovery. So 12 by 400 with 400 recovery is, is the gist of that. Should be a fun one. Uh, gonna have the family come out and film. Gonna do it over at Fish Creek. So here we go, gonna warm up out there. Staring at two different views on your window ledge. Coffee is gone cold, it's like time froze. There you go, wishing, floating down. I Seven to eight out of ten, not like excellent, but a little breezy. Not actually fast to run on like gravel covered asphalt, but all things considered pretty good. Been a little tired because of the travel and the inconsistency of routine, but number one rule of vacation running, doesn't have to be perfect, doesn't even have to be good, but you gotta get it done. And we got it done. Ran like 66, 65, 67-ish for all my 400s, which, you know, if I'm doing honest reflection of what I could run a 5K on this this road, it's probably slower than that, so we'll take it. Since 
having Jace since becoming a father, now a father of two, my running has taken off. Like I've had all my breakthroughs since becoming a father. And, and it's kind of one of those things where it's like people admire like, oh, it's so cool that you can balance becoming a, being a father and being an athlete. And I am very proud of that. But one of the things that I think is being a father makes me a better athlete. Being an athlete makes me a better father. These are, these are two pieces of me that coexist now in a way that I did I couldn't have imagined how it would change my life obviously just the perspective I feel like I'm running for so much more than just myself now when I crossed the finish line in Seville that moment meant more knowing that that moment impacts not just myself not just Jill my wife but my kids and my family forever and my extended family and everything but they bring me so much joy that they bring me this balance and this this motivation to make them proud and to to do things you know the right way and do hard things and and be an example and 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 show the virtues that i want them to one day be able to uphold i'm excited to get back to what worked for me pre-Seville. I'm gonna run some shorter races. Um, I'm going to do the Gifu Half Marathon in Japan on April 28th. Then I'm going to do the Canadian 10,000 meter championships in Vancouver on May 11th. And then I'm going to finish my mini season of shorter races in Ottawa on May 25th at the Road 10K Championships. And I'll tell you why those those goals are more than just, uh, those races were chosen for more reasons than just they sounded fun or I needed to train on my speed, which those are all true. I need to work on my speed in order before I start marathon training again. But a couple of the things that motivate me, just like when I tried to break four, I haven't broken 28 minutes in a 10K. That's a big goal of mine in my lifetime. So throw a 10K on the schedule, see if I can take a scratch at that goal. And then also I have never won a national championship. I've been a runner up, I think three or four times now, uh, both at Canadian nationals, NCAA. I've always been the bridesmaid, never the bride. So I picked two national championship races with the hopes of at least getting my first national title out of the way in one of those two. So that's a really, really important goal to me. It's going to be a lot more track workouts and fun stuff like that for the next month or so, working on the speed, getting ready for some championship racing. So I'm really excited about that and excited to take you guys along the, the journey with me to those championship races.